board certified swallowing specialist, how to get board certified in swallowing and swallowing disorders. Do you want to get board certified in swallowing and swallowing disorders? It's a great opportunity to really dive into the current literature and best practice for dysphagia. The extra letters at the end of your name don't hurt either. I'm going to lay it all out for you and outline what you need to do to become the coveted board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. According to the American Board of Swallowing and Swallowing Disorders website, an SLP who is a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders maintains exceptional high level skills and clinical experience in the evaluation and treatment of swallowing disorders. They have chosen to devote a significant amount of their clinical practice and continuing education to diagnosing and treating this complex disorder. It really depends on the facility or company that you work for if obtaining the BCSS will actually get you a raise or more recognition. For some, it absolutely does, and for others, it does not. To obtain your BCSS, you must complete the following requirements. Number one, obtain your ASHA certification. Number two, obtain 75 hours of continuing education, or 0.75 ASHA CEUs, which we'll discuss further in a minute. Number three, spend a minimum of 350 clock hours per year assessing and or treating swallowing disorders. There's also a separate administrative or supervisory track if you're not currently seeing patients. So check out the ABSSD website for more information on that track. And lastly, advanced skill documentation, which we will break down further. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Point number one. The first point I wanna make is about getting those 75 hours worth of intermediate or advanced CEUs in a three year period. Yes, wow, that seems like a ton, but really truly it's actually not. If you go to some of the bigger conferences each year, like the ASHA convention or the Dysphagia Research Society meetings, you can easily get 20 to 25 hours worth there alone. So throw in a few more day long courses and you've met the requirement. The tricky part is that for the majority of the requirement, the courses do need to be live and in person. So if you're hoping to get all of those courses from the comfort of your own couch, you'll have to think again. So be prepared to travel to some of those bigger conferences. Since COVID, they have changed the requirements slightly to allow for more virtual courses, but it is still only a small percentage. So be sure to check out the ABSSD's website for the latest requirements. The courses for ASHA CEUs must all be registered at least intermediate or advanced. A few years ago, our options were greatly limited, but thankfully now there are much more options, so that shouldn't be too difficult to meet. Just always be mindful of what it is and write that down. For some reason, you might find courses that you think surely are advanced, but they were only registered as beginner for some reason. Now for the daunting part, write down every single course or presentation, its presenter's name and its entire title that you took over those three years. The mistake that some SLPs have made, and myself included, is that they just write down Dysphagia Research Society and not the individual talks, and this will not be accepted on the application. For me personally, writing down all of the courses and titles of each course that I took was the most daunting part of the application because no, I did not write down each presentation and the ASHA registry did not keep track of that for me either. So that involved a lot of digging and memory. Point number two, documenting advanced skills. According to the ABSSD website, thorough documentation of advanced level skills in swallowing and swallowing disorders Candidates must demonstrate that they have applied the highest level of ethical standards in their practice. All applicants for the BCSS must evidence advanced clinical or leadership experience by having a sufficient number of swallowing related activities, accomplishments, and or publications beyond those expected in the regular execution of their job. Therefore, it is critical and expected that the applicant be involved in professional activities related to dysphagia outside of their institution. I've informally mentored many SLPs who have applied for the BCSS. You can actually request for a formal mentor as well through the ABSSD website. But the number one thing that I kept seeing people getting denied for is not having enough activities outside of your current workplace. 
Of course, it's wonderful for you to be educating and doing in-services in your facility, but the point of the board certification is education and advocacy activities in your greater community. Now, let me give you some examples of these activities straight from the ABSSD website that will meet this requirement. So research or clinical presentations at state, regional, or national meetings, being a clinical supervisor for several clinicians or students for patients with dysphagia, implementing evidence-based programs on dysphagia at a local facility, doing educational presentations on dysphagia in the community, guest lecturing on dysphagia at local universities, teaching a graduate level dysphagia course, writing a clinical or educational publication, being a primary academic or clinical advisor to graduate students. You could also serve on dysphagia related committees, the local state or national level, be involved in leadership and professional organizations with a focus on swallowing, or lastly, help with the development and or expansion of a swallowing program. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to turn on the notification bell. Point number three, know your neuroanatomy. Whether we like to admit it or not, or whether we've had an extensive amount of knowledge in it, everything we do comes down to neuroanatomy and the cranial nerves. While those of us that are board certified, we aren't allowed to tell you exactly what's on the test, but allow me to gently nudge you to study your neuroanatomy. I have a little story for you about how I failed the BCSS test my first time I took it. Let me preface this by saying I'm a notoriously horrible test taker. I was pregnant, living with my parents, and was between jobs at the time. So probably not in the best mental space at all to take it, but I digress. Let me tell you that I did not study any neuroanatomy at all, and I failed. I got a 66% the first time I took it. I assumed it was because my life was in total disarray at the time, but I probably was not prepared for the test at all. Lo and behold, I retook it after I got my life back together, studied my neuroanatomy that I really truly did know in my brain all along, and got a 98%. So please do not do to yourself what I did. Study your neuro. If you're looking for a place to study from for your board certification test, check out the metaslpcollective.com where we have editorial reviewed resources, also a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors, many who do have their BCSS and are happy to assist you with the application process and identifying some of those grueling advanced skills.